Now, the story that I'm about to tell today is the story of a young woman named Rosanna Miliani. And before I get into this, I want to say that the video that I've put together here is is a video that I actually made about a year ago, and I never did get around to posting it. But as I was doing some stories on um, disappearances and deaths in the Great Smoky Mountains, her name came back up in the research, and I remembered having done this video about her. So I went back and added a little bit to it and updated it. So it may seem a little bit choppy put together. I apologize for that, but I wanted to bring as many details to this case as I could. So I'll start out by reading from the Charlie Project what was the details about her. Rosanna Miliani went missing on December the 7th, 2005 from Cherokee, North Carolina. She was a female. She was born November 13th, 1976. She was 29 years old at the time of her disappearance. She was said to be about 5 foot 8 and around 200 to 220 pounds. At the time of her disappearance, it was possible that she was wearing a white gold diamond solitaire ring and a white gold pendant with a yellow stone. Now, they have her listed here as Caucasian, but in, in parts and clips that I'm going to put together in, within this video, you'll see that her parents are not Caucasian. And, and that's not really all that important. The only reason I'm including that is because on the missing posters and stuff, they had her list, listed as Caucasian. But she was actually a resident of Miami, Florida. She um, had brown hair and brown eyes, and she went by the nickname Sassy. She has a tattoo of a lotus flower with Chinese letters in blue and red ink on her back. Her ears were double pierced, and her wisdom teeth had been surgically removed. This is from the Charlie Project. Miliani was last seen at approximately noon at the Ramada Inn Hotel in the vicinity of the 100 block of Paint Town Road in Cherokee, North Carolina. She was from Miami, Florida and had come to North Carolina to the Great Smoky Mountains to hike and to vacation. She spoke to her father that morning and told him of plans to hike the Appalachian Trail. She was last sighted in Bryson City, North Carolina on the day of her disappearance. I just wanted to include a couple of facts that I have put together a, a, some clips from a TV show called Real Life Nightmare. They did a story on her included in... Um, a serial killer that they believe may have been involved in her disappearance. And he denied having any involvement in it, even though an eyewitness that saw this girl with a man swears and vows that she made no mistake about it, that this was the man that was with this woman on the morning of her disappearance. You have to either, you kind of have to segue into this whole story about this Appalachian uh, serial killer, the Appalachian Trail serial killer, uh, Gary Hilton. Now, it's believed without any real concrete evidence that Gary Hilton was responsible for this woman's death, although her body has never been found. Rosanna Milani was one of the of the names that came up. There were just so many similarities that the question is, was it Gary Hilton or who was it? Authorities were able to connect four murders to Gary Hilton. Yet another case with strange similarities emerges. A young woman had mysteriously disappeared from a small North Carolina mountain town. Authorities were now wondering if she also fell victim to this serial killer. 
My name is Luz Miliani. I'm the mother of Rosanna Miliani. My daughter was a very, very energetic girl. I call her my earthquake because the moment she arrived, you knew that she was here. I'm the father of Rosanna Miliani. Rosanna was very artistic. She was creative. She travels a lot. She loves to go different places. On December 7, 2005, Rosanna Miliani traveled to Bryson City, North Carolina. In the afternoon of that same day, Rosanna vanished in the thin air. No one's seen or heard from her since then. It is a true mystery. The only eyewitness that put Rosanna Miliani with Gary Hilton was a local store owner who said that the two of them came into her store together. She didn't report this right away. It was two years. I, I believe that that was in one of the reports that I read that two years had passed from the time that she that they came into her store together before she reported it because she didn't know about this girl's disappearance. Bryson City, North Carolina is a small town. It's at the doorway to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Fresh air, clean water, and nice people. At the time of Rosanna's disappearance, she was 29 years of age. There is no doubt, no doubt in my mind, that there is someone who took Rosanna. Rosanna had a target on her back. When you take a young female who is walking around a downtown area and pull the luggage, that is an indicator to a person who might have criminal intentions. And was it Gary Hilton or was it someone else? The last time Rosiana spoke with her father was on December 7th at 7.41 a.m. when she made the phone call from her room at the Ramada Inn in Cherokee, which is now the Cherokee Grand Lodge. She greeted me. Hello, Daddy. Uh, I'm in North Carolina. Why are you doing that? Well, I'm just, this is beautiful here. I wanted to come here. I'll be home soon. I will keep in touch. Her father reached out to law enforcement because they were always in contact and then she just dropped off the face of the earth. We immediately launched an investigation trying to find out and trace Rosanna's last movements. We found that she was in downtown Bryson City shopping. Some of the places that she went to was a local hair salon. At that time, she made statements that she was there to go hiking. Rosiana did not have her own vehicle while she was here. She put some of her stuff in storage. The storage unit that Rosiana had had been prepaid for a month. We believe that she had full intentions of staying here for that month. Also, we found that she had went to a local bank and was going to open up a checking account. She had plans. In June of 2009, a private investigator hired by her family issued a sketch of a man that was seen with her before she vanished. A store clerk who read about Miliani's disappearance in the newspaper on the two-year anniversary stated that she sold Miliani a backpack, that she was in her store with a man around 60 years old who had gray hair around his ears, around his face framing, but it looked like he was also wearing a hair piece. This is the man that is believed to be Gary Michael Hilton. Gary Hilton was a drifter who used forests and national parks in the southeastern United States. I have often believed, and I did a story on this, you can find these videos on my channel, on the two women who were murdered inside their campsite in the Shenandoah National Forest, which is in Virginia, probably an hour to two hour drive from the Smoky Mountains. I believe that he that Gary Hilton very possibly was the was the one that murdered them. 
it had been a period of time after Rosanna went missing. So I, I reached out to the local news media to see if they would run another article. They willingly agreed to help out. So just within a few days after the article came out in the local Bryson City newspaper, I received a phone call from a lady who worked in a local downtown thrift store. And she told me, this has haunted me. The person who I am sure and certain that was in my store was in fact Rosanna. I do not think there's one doubt in my mind that I've seen her. Even after all these years, I might get mixed up on a few things, but I know that I saw her. The date that she observed Rosanna in her store was in fact the date that Rosanna went missing. It sticks out her mind for that day because it resembled one of her family members and actually thought that it was her when she came into the store. She also said that she was with uh, an older male that was in his 60s. They had come into the store together. The store clerk told me that the male appeared to be very guarded over Rosanna. It was like he had her under his spell. She acted to me like that the man was in control and she should do what he told her to do. The store clerk also advised me that the male individual stated that he was a preacher who often traveled from campground to campground preaching. The description of the male was in his early to mid-60s. He was a white male, um, and she also felt like he was wearing a hairpiece. Now, the sketch that the woman, the description of the man and the sketch that they made for the man that this woman said came into her store that morning with Rosanna, um, she says that it looked almost like he was wearing a toupee, that he was, it was like he was balding in the front, and Gary Hilton was balding in the front, um, and that you could see the gray uh, hair around the sides, around his ears, and just kind of sticking out from under this darker uh, hair, which she said looked like a toupee. And in the sketch, you can see that they've drawn it as though he is, you know, it looks like he is wearing a toupee. I don't know that they found one in his van when they went to uh, confront him. Same hair line, the same brow line, the same nose. Also, all the descriptors that the store clerk gave was that, that the gentleman that was in there appeared to be balding. Gary Hilton was also balding. Do you think it's possible that Gary Hilton was the man that came into the thrift shop? I not only think it's possible, I know he's the man that came into the thrift store. And I broke out in, in a sweat. I was that close to a murderer. During the investigation, we were able to confirm Gary had been in our area at the time of the disappearance. This area is full of hiking trails, campgrounds, areas that, that he frequented to where he could control his victims. John Bryant was an elderly victim of Gary Hilton. The area to where Mr. Bryant's body was located in the Nantahala Forest is adjacent to Bryson City. There were just too many similarities. The North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation did determine that those links were credible. So it was decided that, that we needed to conduct an interview with Gary Hilton. This is about a lady by the name of Rosanna Milioni. Okay, I know who you're talking about. I don't think she was actually out on the hiking trails in the forest and that they wandered upon each other. It's possible that she might have gone into the forest to hike and wandered onto a campsite where he happened to be. And he may have befriended her and seeing that she was a woman there alone, maybe inexperienced and didn't really know these trails. It's possible that he might have offered to hike with her 
Now, in an interview with her father, he says that while his daughter did suffer from some bipolar disorder, that it had never really been a problem for her, that she had never before, like, just disappeared, that she did travel quite a bit. So she calls him up and tells him she's in North Carolina. He asks, why are you there? She says, it's just a beautiful place that I wanted to visit, and I will be home soon. She rented a storage locker for one month, and I don't know the status of her hotel rental. Now, it says here that she was staying at the Ramada Inn in Cherokee, North Carolina, which is very close to Bryson City. These are both small communities close together within the North Carolina side of the Great Smoky Mountains. And I don't know if she had paid up in advance to in the hotel room, or it's my belief that the reason that she rented the storage locker was because she was planning to go out and hike this trail for a, whether it was for one day or a week. Or longer she didn't want to be paying for a hotel room nightly when she wasn't going to be staying there so I wondered if this man that she was seen with that morning if he told her I'll I'll come by the hotel and pick you up you get your belongings I'll drive you over to your storage locker you can put your things in there and then we'll go hiking said she didn't have a car there she had traveled from Miami by bus so when she arrived in the Smoky Mountains in Bryson City she was walking now I couldn't find a whole lot of information on this but there is an article from a newspaper there in North Carolina then I couldn't even find the date on it I'm going to keep looking but it did say that her belongings were found in the storage locker I don't know if everything was there or if there were items that were missing. I don't know if her cell phone was there, if this would have led to any clues. The camera, if there were photographs on this camera, I don't know because it didn't go into any details. This article just gave a brief statement saying that her belongings were found in the storage locker that she had rented. Uh, the ring that she had been wearing and the pendant that her family believed that she was probably wearing were never recovered. I don't know if these items could have ended up in a pawn shop somewhere. As far as the money that was deposited into this bank account on December the 31st, I couldn't find a whole lot about that. I don't know if her family had done that to see if she was still using her card. In one article that I read, it said that Gary Hilton was found to have her card and had tried to use it at an ATM. Now, he was using people's cards. He was going to ATMs using some of his victims' cards. But in all of the articles that I watched and on the documentary, there was no mention of that by the police. So these are just some speculations. But... It was said that her belongings were found in this storage locker. This man, this Gary Hilton, he was a braggart. He, he was, he wrote, he helped to write a script for a movie, a low budget movie that was made about a man who was stalking women to kill them. And he, he suggested this storyline to someone who was writing, a, wanting to write a movie. So, basically, he was giving them his own story. Early on during the uh, investigation of Gary Hilton, I was notified that there were two unknown DNA samples that were located in Gary Hilton's van. Mary's blood was there. John Bryant's blood was there. Cheryl Dunlap's blood was there. And there's other blood that's there that suggests that there's other victims. DNA for Rosiana has been compared to other unknown DNA samples and we've not received any positive connections between them. Even after all these years, we don't have 
any evidence linking anyone to the disappearance of Rosiana. It is a true mystery. One of the things that, that we had decided that needed to be done was myself and Special Agent Shannon Ash traveled down to the prison of Florida where Gary was being held and interviews were conducted with him. This is about a lady by the name of Rosanna Miliani. Okay, I know who you're talking about. There's a couple reasons I want to talk to you about this. Uh, well, it fits my M.O. Other than just thinking that's one creepy SOB, he was very cooperative. Uh, but on the other hand, when you looked into his eyes, you could tell that Satan was running his soul. He talked about everything. He went over other victims, how he did it, why he did it, very graphic details. Started talking about our case. He had done his homework. He knew what we were coming down to uh, talk to him about. No, no, on December 7th, 2005, was seen with a male. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just a composite. So that's the same reason we're going to come. It's similar to you. Is that you? Oh, no, no. Listen, well, let's cut to the chase right now. Okay, listen. The description I got was he was 50 to 60 years old. Okay, not only that, she was a hiker. I was a big time hiker. She disappeared during a hiking trip under some circumstances. My victims were all taken from the woods. Okay, it all fits together. But listen, it fits me, but it wasn't me. Okay. Rosanna Miliani traveled to Bryson City, North Carolina to do some hiking. And in the afternoon of that same day, Rosanna vanished into thin air. What's sad about all of this is that people travel from all over the world to hike the Appalachian Trail, and people travel from all over the world to visit the Great Smoky Mountains. It's some of the most beautiful scenery in our country. And this young woman, for whatever reason, was drawn to this area. She wanted to come there. She wanted adventure. She wanted to try something different. Maybe like so many others, she wanted to challenge herself, or maybe she just wanted the solitude of the of these hiking trails. Maybe she'd read about it. Maybe she had friends who had done it. I don't know. But she never really got a chance to experience the beauty of the Appalachian Trail and the Great Smoky Mountains and just the beauty of experiencing that area and and being in nature like that because someone it's my belief that someone came into contact with her and stopped her from car carrying out her you know plans uh, was it Gary Hilton I don't know it's very likely that it was is it likely that she may be just stumbled off the trail and became lost and wondering? I don't know. That's possible, too. I don't know that she had... I couldn't find anything in my research to say that she had come there prepared, really, to hike these trails long-term. I don't know that she had, like um, another video that I did on another young man who went missing in the Smoky Mountains, was very prepared, had gone and bought lots of gear. I don't know that she did that. Uh, a sleeping bag or a backpack or something like that is just maybe for someone who plans to camp out one night or two. She didn't seem to be prepared um, to go into these mountains. And maybe the, the person that she came into contact with, it, with if it was Gary Hilton, maybe he convinced her that he had all this camping equipment and that he would teach her or a, a few people believe it's possible that she may be like one of others who just became lost and wandered in the forest and met her demise from hypothermia. It was December or some other challenge that she met with, couldn't find her way out. Um, searches, I'm sure searches were conducted and, and as far as I know, 
um, no trace of her has ever been found. And it's just a very sad case. It's a mystery that remains. Hopefully one day, Gary Hilton, if he was responsible, would admit to it. I don't know that he would because he's already on death row for other murders. And I just, um, I don't want people to lose the desire to explore these trails and just be more prepared. Just, um, they said that she did suffer from some bipolar disorder. Her family was concerned that she did not have her medication that could have been that could have played a role um is it possible that she left that area and went elsewhere and wandered off somewhere into the world i, I don't know anything is possible was rosanna's disappearance connected to the serial killer gary hilton gary was more than willing to take the polygraph he was asked point blank questions about the disappearance after it was over the polygraph examiner noted that uh, he could not find anything that would lead him to believe that Gary was not being honest there was no deception noted during the polygraph leaving the way it is now without knowing I think is a torture it's very difficult every single minute she's in my mind I'm 75 years old, and I don't like to die without knowing what happened to my daughter. I need to find out. I need to put a conclusion to that. I really plead anyone to help me up solve this problem. My daughter has been lost for so many years. The number that you have to call is 828-488. 0159 at the Swan County Sheriff's Office. There's been no trace of her, and many people have closed her case because they believe that Gary Hilton murdered her, and she is listed as one of his possible victims. So, thanks for watching.